welcome back to our Chick Quest Adventure Program. I am so excited that you have chosen to come back again today. Remember, we are going to learn about eggs and chickens and how soybeans are part of the chicken diet in the United States. Remember, Ohio is the number two egg producer in the nation. So we have a really important job to help feed the rest of America. Well, today we're gonna to learn a little bit about egg shells and how they allow the developing chicks on the inside of the egg shells to have access to air and moisture and sometimes disease. So let's take a look at the egg shells really quick. I'm gonna switch my camera so we can talk. Look at these egg shells. Do you remember how we talked about them earlier? They are nice and strong so that the chick who's on the inside of the egg can develop properly. We talked about how we have to rotate those eggs while they are in development process so that they don't stick to the egg. We also talked about some of the inner parts of the egg. Remember how the egg um, will help to protect the chick as it suspends that embryo on the yolk. Okay, here's the problem though, guys. How can I see what's going on in there? You know, these eggshells are awesome for developing chicks, but they're hard for a scientist so that we can see inside. So today we are going to be problem solvers. How can we prove that air and moisture can get inside of the egg and help the developing chick? Let's think really quick. If I left this egg out, on the table for a week, what could happen? Well, let's think if I left a glass of water out on the table for a week, what do you think would happen? Let's make a prediction. If I left a glass of water out, would there be as much moisture or liquid in the glass at the end of the week as there was at the beginning of the week? Eggs are the same way. We could go ahead and take this egg and sit it on the counter for a whole week. And because these shells are porous, the moisture would evaporate out and that would dehydrate our developing chick and cause a lot of problems. Chicks probably couldn't survive that. That's one of the reasons why it's really, really important to leave our egg in the incubator where the moisture level is at a constant 60%. How can I prove though that the moisture is leaving the egg through the pores. Well, at the beginning of the week, I could weigh my egg. Then at the end of the week, I could reweigh my egg and I could compare the results. Usually you're gonna lose a lot of moisture. And if you remember that air cell at the top will expand. So as the contents dehydrates, that air cell at the top will get to be bigger. Okay, you're gonna to have to try that at home. Weigh your egg at the beginning of the week, ask your mom or dad if you can leave it on the counter all week, and then weigh it again at the end of the week, and let me know what happens. Just go on grownextgen.org and email me a question, okay? Okay, what's another way that we as problem solvers could really think about how we can prove that an eggshell is porous. Hmm. If I said that air can go in and out and water can go in and out, it has to be able to travel through something. Eggs on the inside have semi-permeable membranes. And what that means is that some things can go through, but other things cannot. Let me show you. Remember these eggs that we saw earlier this week? I'm gonna crack one of them open so that you can see the membranes inside. Just a second. Okay. The membrane is right here on the inside. If you have an egg at home, you can crack it too. And you can actually push on that membrane up against the air cell at the top of the egg. I know it's hard to see, but that membrane is right there. You see how it's pushing? So our eggshell is lined with a membrane on the inside, just like our egg yolk is also lined with a membrane. 
Let me prove it to you. I'm going to take the edge of my eggshell and I'm going to bust open the membrane. And then what's going to happen, you guys? Make a prediction. Okay, you're right. The yolk is going to spread out all over the plate. Let's see if you're right. Uh-oh. It's hard to do. There it goes. Do you see how that membrane, once ruptured, allowed the yolk to expand across the plate? So that shows you in two ways that there's a membrane inside. This membrane right here that surrounds the um, developing egg between it and the shell and the membrane that surrounds the yolk. All right, let's move this messy plate. What's another way that I can prove that eggs have pores on the shell and a semi-permeable membrane? I warmed up this tea kettle of hot water. Don't do this at home without help from your mom or dad or some adult. I'm gonna put hot water in this bowl. I don't know if you can see the steam or not, but it's toasty. Then I'm gonna take an egg, one that we've been using this week. See, I've marked it and I'm gonna put it in the hot water and we're gonna make an observation. What do we think will happen if I put an egg in hot water? Have you ever helped your parents to hard boil an egg? Sometimes you see something on the outside of the shell. Take a minute and make a prediction on what might you see on the outside of the shell. What's coming up out of the shell, especially at the top where that air cell was? Do you see the little bubbles? What do you think that is? Let me put in another egg too. Maybe this one will have some more. Look at all those little air bubbles that are coming out of that eggshell. It's hard for you to see there, so I'm gonna lift it up a little bit. Do you see all those bubbles that are coming out? Those air bubbles are part of the air in the shell that provides oxygen to the developing chick. Ooh, that's a little toasty, so I'm gonna set it down. But those air bubbles are coming out through that semi-permeable membrane and the porous eggshell. So that's another way you can prove that your eggs have pore spaces in the shell. Now let's think a little bit about why that happens. Let me move this out of the way. Remember, chicks have to have to be able to get moisture and air in and out of the shell. But sometimes if my hands are dirty and I touch the shell, I might also provide some bacteria or some other pathogen that could harm my developing chick. So when we have fertilized eggs, we wanna make sure that we only are using eggs when we have washed our hands or have gloves on our hands. Also, if you pick up an egg, you might get something from the egg to your fingers. So practice proper hand washing, okay? One thing I can do as a scientist is I can actually remove the shell without cracking the egg and keep it intact. Let me show you how. I went ahead and I put this egg in white vinegar for 24 hours. And when I did that, it looks like this. Look at that. Here's an egg and it's kind of squishy and bouncy. You can see there's still some of the eggshell on it. Not all of it has dissolved yet, but because that vinegar has a different pH than the shell, it will actually eat the shell up and take it off. So that's what we have today. Look inside of that. You can see the yolk, right? Now this is just a table egg, so there's no developing chick in there, but you can also see that that semi-permeable membrane will grow or shrink depending upon what's inside. It's kind of like a bouncy ball. Pretty cool, huh? Once I removed the shell from the egg, I can show you how some things can go through into the egg and how other things can come out like water or oxygen. Let's take a look. I'm gonna put this here for reference, okay? And I'm gonna put if I can get it out of the warm water here. 
a normal egg. So you can see the size differences. And what I have in my hands right here is that membrane that lines the inside of the egg shell. Okay. If I take that egg and I put it in water, it will stretch and grow. Look at that. See how that's different from the egg next to it? The shell makes sure that the egg stays within a certain volume. Remember, volume means the amount of space something takes up. This eggshell was put in water and water was able to go through the membrane into the egg and expand it because it's a stretchy membrane, see? So this is now bigger than its original size because water traveled through the membrane into the egg. What about other things that can't go into the egg? Well, sometimes if I put my egg in a solution that cannot travel through the membrane like corn syrup, I'll actually have water leave the egg. And the water, see, all I really see here, you guys, is the yolk. Most of this water that was inside of this egg left and went out into the corn syrup solution and it shrank the egg. Wow, let's look at these really carefully. Here's a normal size egg. Here's an egg where I removed the shell. Here's an egg with the shell removed that I put in water and it got really big. And here's an egg that I put in corn syrup and the water left the cell and got really small. That's pretty crazy, huh? Okay, I got a piece of paper here just so that you could understand a little bit better. And you see, this is a semi-permeable membrane. And that means that some of it's solid and some of it has spaces for things to travel across. But those spaces are a small size. So usually the only things that can travel across are water and air. Let me write that in here. So water can go in and out, and so can oxygen. I'll just put here air. But guess what? Big molecules like sugar cannot. So when they come up here, boop, they cannot cross. So let's look at this really carefully. Inside of the egg cell, water, oops, I forgot my R, goodness can go back and cross, and air can go back and cross because they can fit through these little holes. But a big molecule like sugar, it can't fit through that little hole. And so it can only stay on this side. In this egg here, remember this one? All of the water rushed from the egg into the sugar solution and it made the egg shrink. Remember this really big egg? Because the egg had a little higher concentration than the water, all of the water traveled through into the egg and made it really, really big. So that's what's so cool about membranes is they can be gatekeepers, which means they can allow things in and out so that the chick is safe. All right, guys, thank you so much for coming in to Grow Next Gen's Chick Quest Adventures and helping me today to talk about semi-permeable membranes and egg porosity. Remember that you can find all this information at grownextgen.org because Ohio soy soybean farmers, pardon me, help to supplement this program and provide this information to you. Anyways, have a fantastic day. Tomorrow, we're gonna talk about the shapes of eggs. So when I'm looking at this egg, like, why isn't it a triangle? Why isn't it a square? What makes this shape just perfect? I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.